Welcome to Lawrence Plays with Cars, and to what I suspect is going to be the last video I put in the RX-8 playlist. Yes, as you probably guessed from the previous video, I've decided it's time to sell the RX-8 and move on. I'm not going to say it's been an easy decision. The RX-8 is a great car. It's nice and quick, it handles nicely, well of course it does, it's a Mazda. And if you need to, you can even fit four people in it in reasonable comfort. Sure, you wouldn't want to sit in the back for a long journey, but it's comfortable enough for a short one, a trip back from the pub or something. Much better than a Hyundai Coupe or an Audi TT. And this isn't even touching on the absolute best part of the car, the engine. Now sure, the rotary engine has a reputation for unreliability, guzzling oil, needing regular rebuilds and so on. And I have to admit, there is an element of truth to that. You do have to look after them, but it's generally the little things, like letting it warm up a bit before you turn it off, maybe adding premix oil to the fuel if you're going to be pushing the car hard, and, and so on. But the oil usage is by design, and in my experience is only about one litre per thousand miles. I've had piston engine cars which use more than that. I can't deny the rebuilds either. I bought this car very cheaply, knowing the engine was probably not in the best condition, shall we say, and sure enough, about three months after I bought it, it refused to start. I had the engine rebuilt, which cost more than the car did, but it's been absolutely great since then, no problems at all. I can't describe how amazing it is to drop into second gear, put your foot down and have the car just keep going faster and faster. In second, it tops out at about 90 miles per hour, with the engine screaming along at about 10,000 RPM. It's amazing. And I keep forgetting gear changes in my new car because, for some reason, it has a red line at about 7,000. That's almost down in diesel territory. So not only does the engine rev all the way to the sky, it makes the most amazing sound when it does so. I'll never forget the sound of a pack of about six RX-8s accelerating up the hill out of the first corner of Brands Hatch together. The video hardly does it justice, I, I think I need a better, much better microphone. But all good things must come to an end, and sadly my RX-8 has come to an end. It went off for an MOT a few months back and came back with some bad news, it's the old Mazda curse. The underside has rusted through to the point that it's no longer considered safe to be used on the road, as the damage is within a certain distance of the suspension mount points. Sadly, it seems Mazdas of this era were absolute rust magnets. My MX-5 from a few years before had exactly the same problem. I understand that, at least in the case of the MX-5s, the problem was down to the way the sills were made. The metal was folded over to give extra strength along the bottom and this caused a channel that uh, allowed water to collect inside and this caused the car to rot from the inside out. With the old MX-5 I, I decided it was worth repairing at the time but with the 8 it's, it's going to cost a bit more and I think I'm ready to be back in a convertible. So, sadly, it's time to move on. My original plan a, a few years ago was to sell my MX-5 which was getting old, tatty and a bit rattly and then buy a temporary car to tide me over until the Mark IV MX-5s came down to a sensible price. The RX-8 seemed ideal for this, as, well, I've always quite liked them. The, uh, the novelty of the rotary engine appeal, the car itself looks good, drives well, and I was definitely looking forward to having a bit more power available to me. The MX-5 prices didn't drop quite as quickly as I was hoping they would though, so I ended up hanging on to the RX-8 for a bit longer than I expected to. I was definitely still enjoying it though, so I wasn't sorry about it, but I still miss the feel of the MX-5. Sure, they're not as powerful, but they're so small and light, they just feel nimble and playful. Agile and fun. They're much cheaper to run because they weigh less and have less, less power, and of course you can put the roof down. I was still looking forward to getting back in an MX-5, as anyone who had to listen to me talk about them back then could tell you. But then, just as prices were getting down to the sort of level I was prepared to pay, Covid struck and prices shot back up again because of the chip shortage and car shortage. And 
went up by about 50%. So, I needed to make a decision. Should I pay the higher price and get the Mark IV MX-5 I've been thinking of for years, even though they're a bit overpriced? Should I get the RX-8 repaired? Or should I go for secret option number three and get another cheap car as a temporary one? Perhaps I should start cycling everywhere and forget about cars entirely. <laughs> well, as you can tell from this video, I decided not to get the 8 repaired. Cycling cycling is fine in the summer, I do enjoy it, but it, but there's a limit to how far you can go and, well, it's not really suitable for track days and it's not really suitable if the weather's bad. So I'll give a bit of a spoiler for the next video and say yes, I did decide to find another cheap car, but you'll have to wait until then to find out what. <laughs> I've already got plenty of plans for things I want to do with the new car though, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you'll be told, told about all the new videos I release, and I'll start off with an introduction to the new car and, and a bit of a comparison with the old one. Thanks for watching, I'll see you then.